Chapter 10 Mountains, Dreams, and Prayer Jesus was the world's biggest misfit. He failed to fit into the religious systems of his day, into the political systems of his day, into the social systems of his day. Financially, he was broke, and at the close of what seemed to be an untimely ministry, he didn't have even a lawyer to represent him in Pilate's judgment hall. Scarcely a handful stood on Golgotha with bleeding hearts while he shed his atoning blood for a lost world. When he said, It is finished, the world thought he was finished. But praise God, there was another day that proved that truth, crushed to earth, will rise again. On the resurrection morning, the strong soldiers fell back like dead men when Jesus was raised through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This was the kind of preaching that saw the radio ministry move forward from that time on. The just shall live by faith was becoming a familiar refrain with Brother Roloff, and more than one letter writer commented about it. This is the key to heaven's strong box. Every prayer draft has been honored at the bank of faith, signed in the name of Jesus because the word is true. We've crossed red seas, enjoyed manna from heaven, drunk water from the rock, followed the pillar of cloud by day, and slept under the pillar of fire by night, eaten quail from the east, crossed old Jordan shouted down to Jericho, and I find myself saying even today with Caleb of old, Lord, give us this mountain. We needed a new church building, and some of us had been dreaming about starting a Christian day school. These were our mountains in the late 1946. Prompted by his usual vision, Lester and the church board moved ahead and purchased property. Soon construction began. The first Sunday in the new large auditorium, it seemed as though the entire congregation could have been seated in the choir loft with room to spare. Where were the people? Now came another testing time. This was followed by an interval of intense prayer and visitation. Lester encouraged his flock by reminding them of God's faithfulness if they would do their part and witness and go out into the highways and byways following God's command. Before long, it was evident that God had not written Ichabod over the door of the new church. The Lord's name was being magnified and souls were being saved. More and more people decided to make Second Baptist Church their church home. But the dream for a Christian day school persisted. Mrs. Walter Davis and I became the first teachers in the two-room school that began in the fall of 1946 in a little building that had been left after the church building had burned. The two classes of first grade were full from the beginning. Obviously, the need for such a school existed. In the next year, there was a demand for a second and third grade. Mrs. Jean Price, then Miss Frances Goodman, joined us in teaching and then worked as Lester's secretary in the afternoon. We were bulging at the seams, and we prevailed upon my husband to remedy the situation. At about that time, Lester was in the Rio Grande Valley preaching at a meeting. A friend in Raymondville asked him to pray with him for a much-needed rain for his cotton crop. Together, the two men knelt in the field. That season, the Lord superabundantly blessed that farmer. In gratitude, he gave $10,000 and loaned another $10,000, and thus our Park Avenue Christian Day School was firmly established. The church grew beyond even our wildest dreams, and it was my privilege to teach the first grade for 17 years. And for several years, I taught other grades. The school is still going strong, with some children attending now, whose parents graduated from earlier classes. Lester is fond of poetry and uses it often on the family altar broadcast. I recall a poem that meant much to us in that time of our lives. I've dreamed many dreams that never came true. I've seen them vanish at dawn. But I've realized enough of my dreams, thank God, to make me want to dream on. I've prayed many prayers when no answer came, though I've waited patient and long. But answers have come to enough of my prayers to make me keep praying on. We kept on dreaming and praying.